Uh, first of all, thank, I'm thanking my uh, colleagues, Dr. Mustafa, Dr. Vinay Gulati, and Dr. Yogendra. Now, hello everybody. Uh, and uh, this is Dr. Mahesh Chakur. And uh, today I'm here for osteopathic approaches for upper limb. So let me introduce myself. Sharing my screen now. Uh, I hope uh, everyone can see the screen. Yes, Doctor Navi. Yes, yes. Okay, so I'll just go ahead with the screenshot, uh, as well as after finishing my this PPT, I'll go for uh, assessment part and then treatment like osteopathic approach for upper limb. So this is me, Dr. Mahesh Chakor, and uh, I've done my physiotherapy, my osteopathy and chiropractic. So as you everybody can see, uh, even I'm a director of the Fizonan Clinic in Pune and health with a clinic in Bhopal. So I'm both... Hello. Yes, yes. Uh, aha, yeah. So I'm working on uh, acquisition and franchise models from last uh, many years, as well as develop a concept of uh, advanced process alignment. So, uh, so our topic is osteopathic approach for upper limb. So osteopathic medicine was founded in 1874 by Dr. A.T. Steele and uh, American Osteopathic Association uh, advocates osteopathy as a complete system of healthcare with a philosophy that combines the needs of the patient with current practice of medicine. And uh, here I'm not gonna read each and every slide, but you can see, and so I can cover some other points as well with the slides. So human body, as per osteopathy, whole body is one unit. So human body is a machine run by unseen force for life. And uh, it may be run harmoniously, necessary that there be a liberty of blood, nerves, arteries from the generating point of their destination. Diseases occur due to damage of this all circulation and articulations because of faulty lesions in muscular and skeletal systems, specifically in the spine and its associated musculature. As a result, traditional bone setting could cure diseases like alignments by restoring normal function of structures and musculoskeletal system. As I already told you, main principle of osteopathy is whole body is one unit. There are some more tenets of osteopathy so we can see here, the human body is a functional unit. Mind, body and spirit are interconnected. Form and function are interdependent. Human body has the innate ability to heal itself. So if you'll align it well, so definitely it will be easy for healing. So osteopathic manipulative treatment is based upon individualized, rational application of the above units. Uh, the body is capable of self-regulation, self-healing, and health maintenance. Health is the natural state of the body, and uh, body possesses complex homeostatic and self-regulatory mechanism that it uses to heal itself from injury. In time of disease, when a part of the body is functioning suboptimally, other parts of the body come out of the natural state of heal in order to compensate for the dysfunction. Aim of osteopathy is to restore body's self-healing capacity by decreasing allostatic load or the physiologic effect of chronic bodily stresses to enhance immune system. So here is a breakdown of osteopathic uh, manipulations and its approaches in direct and indirect way. 
So before going ahead with these approaches, I would like to tell everyone about gate theory. As we already studied it in our physiotherapy about pain gate mechanism, and osteopath is mentioned as gate theory. So this gate theory says, when you feel a sensation other than pain, like a rubbing, massage, or even a mild electrical impulse, your spinal column will actually close the gate and not let pain impulses pass to the brain. So this is such a simple gate theory. So on this basis, oh, we're going to work on these approaches. Direct treatment approach means soft tissue techniques, direct lateral or linear stretching of muscle and fascia. Frequently used to prepare for or conclude oral treatment. Uh, now we are focusing on articulated treatment system, which is low velocity, moderate to high amplitude, springing focused on joint functioning. High velocity, low amplitude, everybody is much aware about this. So in osteopathy, there are long liver thrusts. So it, it works on fast, short thrust through restrictive articulatory barriers. Muscle energy techniques. So here we use post isometric relaxation to stretch muscles and increase ROM. With targeted muscle stretch to its barrier, the patient is instructed to move toward ease. In uh, indirect treatment approach, we can see strain counter strain techniques. In, and again, famous in osteopathy as a postural release treatment, PRT. It focused on specific tender points on the body that are held in a position of ease of 90 seconds after which the tenderness is relieved. Facilitated positional release. Patient's spine is placed at neutral position while the isolated segment for treatment is placed at ease. Compression or and, uh, traction is then added to release muscle, fascia, and uh, joints. So here, there are some more techniques which are into direct and indirect approaches. One is myofascial release and uh, ligamentous articular restraint. In myofascial release, it encompasses many of the modalities mentioned above to treat restriction of muscle and fascia. This technique is generally not as aggressive as others. So in LS, ligaments or joints are placed into a state of balanced tension until a release is felt. And it works on three principles, disengage, exaggerate, and balance. So here uh, we are done with this, our osteopathic PPT. And I would like to tell you, like uh, I'm working on advanced postural alignment with a combination of chiropractic, osteopathy, and physiotherapy. With chiropractic and osteopathy, I go for alignment and for physiotherapy. And with physiotherapy, I go for strengthening of alignment. Uh, I hope everybody can see me well, Dr. Naveen? Yes. Okay. So, uh, with chiropractic and osteopathy, I work on alignment and with the uh, physiotherapy, I work on strengthening of alignment. And that does helps to go for long-term results. Uh, now, today, it's not possible to cover all aspects uh, of osteopathic approaches but I'm going to cover only two. This is myofascial release and uh, ligamentous articular strain. So with this, I got uh, amazing results. And, um, and I can see in this today's group, like what we did our last uh, conclave. There I covered osteopathic approach for lower limb. So today I'm going to cover osteopathic approach for upper limb. Generally, I work with this both for osteopathic releases. Then I go for a chiropractic alignment and then physiotherapy. So 
for today's um, this osteopathic approach some particular chain i follows so that is as per dr janda because as per dr janda there's some muscle which is prone for tightness some is prone for weakness as depend upon their like uh, kinetic chains antagonist agonist positions so what is that chain let me start with uh, it is sternocleidomastoid comes first then scalini trapezius your uh, costo coracoid ligament pectorals deltoid anterior and middle bicep brachii tricep brachii your uh, common extensor tendon which is lateral epicondyle technique and uh, common flexor tendon which is um, middle epicondyle technique then interstitial membrane and uh, we work on thenar and hypothenar abundance ls with wrist so we can go ahead with this uh, release this part and uh, everybody there's a request if you have doubt we can discuss after finishing my session so i'm requesting uh, dr gaura to help me with this Screen. To hold it for you. So generally, as I told about, uh, I work on osteopathic approach on upper limb and lower limb, and then go for keratin. But before that, as we checked last time, uh, I always check for limb length test. Today. I'm not going to check that again because most of you knows about limb length test and abdominal surgery. Because here I'm going to just perform entire uh, chain. And uh, anyways, Dr. Naveen is going to cover that limb length test in his part. Okay, so let me start with the. Um, did I explain about sternal grammar? So maybe we should talk about. You can cl come close from this way. Oh yeah, fine. Put your hands down. So first muscle would be sternocleidal mastoid, and here now I'm not gonna de gonna go deep for origin and insertion, but your your two finger would be at one point of origin. Other would be at Insertion for sternocleidomastoid, you may choke the patient. So always don't forget to ask your patient whether they are feeling choke or pain. If they are feeling choke, change the direction. Okay, and generally the direction should be distally, not posterior. Listen to me again. So the direction should be distal, not posterior. If you are going posterior, we may choke the patient. So I'm maintaining here distal pressure, and I'm maintaining here proximal pressure. And by holding this for thirty seconds, and if it is not possible by patient, because some of the patient they may feel very painful, so we have to. You can hold for ten seconds also, ten, twenty, thirty, like that. Okay, so like that, I'm gonna do it. Three times. One, two, three. Next point would be scalene. So I'm at the middle of the clavicle, and again I'm there, uh, posterior, mild posterior, but mostly distal. And this point gonna be the same. The above point gonna be the same. So sorry for the pain. So see, uh, I hope everybody can see that it's very wincing pain. So go very gently with your patient again here. Don't forget to ask uh, whether they are feeling choke or pain. If they are feeling pain, ask them. Don't worry. You have to feel the pain. And uh, if there is choke, change the direction again. Same way, 
between 10 to 30 second as per patient convenience repeat for three times okay so this is second point third point would be the trapezius mfr technique so here at the angle of mandible one hand would be and um, the head direction would be the lateral rotation my another hand gonna be okay so my another hand gonna be on the shoulder and my direction gonna be the opposite side so by doing this i'm achieving this uh, upper trapezius and middle trapezius myofascial release again here hold this for 10 to 30 seconds as per patient convenience and repeat for three times okay so this is third technique and commonly we should repeat this technique on other side as I uh, as I told you about uh, principle of osteopathy, whole body is one unit. So if patient complains of pain on right side, please make sure you have to balance on both the sides. Okay. So here I'm repeating the technique again for sternocleo. So opposite direction pressure. As I already mentioned about sternocleo point. And I explain you the dosimetry also about the same. This is Kelleni point. Okay. So this is Kelleni point. Third is for trapezius. Here, as I mentioned about majorly upper trapezius we can cover and uh, some point of middle trapezius so after doing these three points then generally i cover for platysma but here he is having beard so generally the person who is having beer go very gently otherwise there is a chance of hair pull and if the patient they don't have beer just i'm just gonna show the direction you all four tip of the uh, finger gonna go posterior and lateral pain. This is the most painful treatment amongst all. But make sure, ask your patient, explain them before doing the treatment. This is gonna be painful, but gonna be very effective. So he's gonna hold it at the origins of SCM. Now he's having pair, so I'm just gonna cover it like this. Hold this for some seconds, hold this for some seconds, hold this for some seconds, and at this angle of uh, mandible, hold this for some seconds. So done with the fourth point, that is uh, platysma reduced. Now next gonna be costocoracoid ligament. Okay, so here you're you're gonna use your both thumb. One thumb gonna be on one point, other, and they go. They both gonna be approximate to each other. Okay, hold this for ten to thirty uh, seconds. As I told you, do it for three times. One, two, three. Okay. After doing this, so we gonna be beneath coracoid process and. Uh, where the our uh, renohumeral joint just distal to that hold this point for pectoral release and here we're gonna go, go proximal distal pressure proximal distal pressure okay one like that three times so after finishing your pectorals, you're gonna go on deltoids, anterior deltoid and middle deltoid. Now all these points gonna be pressure gonna be proximal. So first, uh, with your both thumbs, press perpendicular to the muscle and go with the proximal pressure. One, two, three. Repeat for three times. 
here not going to, this is the LS technique, ligamentous articulatory strain. So there will be no uh, like uh, hold like that. As I mentioned for these other points, I told you for hold for between 10 to 30 seconds as per patient convenience. But all rest of the points, they're not going to be hold. Just release it. Press perpendicular and proximal normal. Proximal normal. Again for medium, proximal normal. Proximal normal. Or you can do one thing. You can proximal weight release. Proximal weight release. Proximal weight release. So three three repetition after that. We're gonna go for bicep brachii. Again, for bicep brachii, you have to start from distal to proximal. Here, press perpendicular to the muscle. Again, proximal weight release. There will be no hold now. So, second point, proximal weight release. Third point, proximal weight release. Okay. And after finishing bicep break, I ask patient to turn to that side. So for tricep, again, from distal to proximal, go from insertion, common insertion point of uh, tricep break. Eye. Last. I'm not going to go for all three. I'm just make, uh, working more on the insertion, the common insertion point. Again, come on the back. After finishing this uh, uh, bicep break and tricep break I'm going to work on um, common, uh, this extensor deuterium contact point, that is lateral epicondyle technique. So here, for lateral epicondyle technique, I'm on the muscle belly, perpendicular to that and then here again the same proximal weight release proximal weight release proximal weight release then for medial epicondyle technique again i'm on the muscle bulk proximal weight release proximal weight release proximal weight release okay then i'm on the interstitial membrane so here again welcome to the muscle belly but here we can cover in three way from distal to proximal. So we can start one, two, three. Again here, one, two, three. So after finishing this point, can come from here. I'm gonna work on um, Kina and Hypokina. So here. While performing, I'm going to ask my patient to make a fist and open. Make a fist and open. So here, the point is going to be proximal. Okay. So I'm at the muscle belly again. And uh, I'm going to go down. At the same time, I'm asking my patient to make a fist, relax. Make a fist, relax. Make a fist, relax. For hypothena, the point is going to be the same. Make a fist. Relax. Make a fist. Relax. Again, second point. Relax. Relax. And for LS, ligamentous articulatory strain, uh, wrist technique, I'm just gonna be proximal to carpals and my both thumb will be at the thina and hypothena laterally placed. And I'm going now distal pressure. So going very gradually, laterally, as I mentioned about one, repeat this, two, repeat this, three. So this is the one way I covered this uh, entire cycle for upper limb osteopathic approach. I would like to repeat the same cycle for now. Uh, another hand is the uh, left upper limb. So as I mentioned you, when I release for this uh, uh, cervical region, I covered the sternocleomastoid, scalene, trapezius, and platysma. So for that I mentioned I covered already both sides, right and left. And for limb, 
I covered this one way completely. Now, now I'm gonna be at costro coracoid ligament point again. Uh, I'm on the muscle belly perpendicular and approximating to. As I mentioned about only for cervical region, I use this uh, point 10 to 30 second hold. For rest, upper limb is not going to be work. On limb, uh, like uh, use the contact point, go proximally or distally, wait and release, and should be repeat uh, two to three times. Okay. After doing this, I'm going to be performing for pectorals. So this is proximal distal way. Then I'm here at deltoid anterior. Okay. Middle. Okay. And now I'm here at bicep break eye. Again, I, I'm just explaining you in brief. I'm going to work from uh, distal to proximal, perpendicular to belly. One, two, three. I'm asking my patient to turn to that side for triceps. Mainly work on the insertion point. So, one, two, three. Come on your back. Then, Okay, fine. Now it's fine. Now I'm at lateral epigondal technique. Medial epigondal technique. Interstitial membrane is again, I'm going to work from distal to proximal. Go one by one. Again here, one by one. Now after finishing this, I'm at... Uh, I'm going to ask my patient for uh, make a make a fist, but sir is having issue with his uh, this. There was some fracture, so he will just work with this other finger, remaining fingers. So with the thin arm, I'm going to just going distally. Yeah, one, two, three, and for hypothin arm again the same, two, three. So this is how I covered. Yeah, so this is how I covered the entire cycle for uh, upper limb. And as I told you, we have to work bilateral. 